All right, everybody, get ready for a big detour ahead, and that's because we have a Uranus Cassini. We're in the beginning stages of a Taurus new moon cycle, and uh, should be nice. How, how was everybody's new moon? We're kind of hunkered down here in the Ozarks, kind of waiting for the big storm to come through, but we don't know if it's going to reach us yet. So that's where we stand. Weather, it's been crazy, hadn't it? Here's our overview, and I can already see the red X up there, DreamBot. Um, here's my update. I think I have it fixed, but it's going to require a new baseline. In other words, a new baseline of all these numbers, and that normally takes a long time. I'm guessing at least maybe three to four weeks just at a, as a minimum. Um, it's making me rethink. And even, even then I'm not like a 70, I'm maybe like a 70% sure that this is going to be the fix and only time will tell. And, um, so basically it's making me rethink, uh, the surf reports in general, because we're going to have several weeks without the, and it's a big travesty because I'm a big fan of the collective unconscious concept because I know, I know it's a big influence and it's a great way, great barometer to see how we've been programmed, what the masses are thinking. And um, in doing so, we can kind of get an idea for what we as a collective are creating. But nonetheless, I might be taking out the dream bot and put it into, into a different video. I'm going to try to keep as much as I can with these surf reports maintained as they are. But right now we have the I Ching and Tropical Astrology. Then once we get into the solution, we're looking at Sidereal, I Ching, and the uh, Rave Mandala, which is human design. Okay, so let's get into this. I Ching 10 is treading carefully. And that, I mean, it's a pretty obvious what that is referring to. The main themes in the Tropical Astrology is Taurus, and the fixed energy, and we have um, right there is a, the Venus and Jupiter that we've been talking about for a while, but now this week, Uranus and Sun going exact, and Sun conjunct, basically Sun, Uranus, and Jupiter all conjunct, and then Venus has a sextile over to Saturn that we'll talk about. Um, it's just, it. Um, there's a part of this is going to be extremely pleasant. And then there's another part of this is going to be really unpredictable and, uh, and maybe some big insights, all these Uranus aspects just means, Hey, let's pay attention. All right. Tread carefully. All right, let's go. And it is my pleasure, my absolute pleasure to shout out four people for the best comment award because it's a four-way tie. John Doe, Madame Michelle, I believe that's a French name. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Terry Ann and Paula Bizak. Bizak. Congratulations, all four of you, and thank you all for your comments. They are uh, wonderful, and they are contributing to the algorithm, so I appreciate you. Here's where we would normally talk about the dream bot, but that's a pass, and we'll give you the big picture. You are here in this little blue band. We're just after a Taurus new moon, so we're in the early part of like the first quarter phase of the Taurus cycle. We're in an, we're still in the Aries. Um, eclipse cycle, which will span about six months. And uh, so that's that. And then we do these energy windows. So better represented down here, where we've got the gold rush energy window. It's primarily because of Jupiter and Uranus and all the fixed energy of Taurus. And, and Uranus is in there as well. But that uh, energy window ends and the archetype switches more to a social engagement somewhere around the 23rd, and that is correlated with Venus, who is the ruler of Taurus, going into Gemini. Um, the sun will go into Gemini a few days earlier, 
And then once Venus leaves, that's when the energy window shifts. But we are talking about this sliver here for this surf week. I was just giving you a heads up for the energies for the remainder of May. Now let's get into the week that we're in question here. And what we're going to see is Sun conjunct Jupiter that goes exact on the 18th. That'll be in the next surf report. And the big one is Sun conjunct Uranus going exact on the 13th. And you, you're also going to see Sun um, parallel with Uranus. And I'll talk about that later. It just means that is a Kazemi. We're going to have Uranus Kazemi. In our detour energy, it's the unpredictability of Uranus on steroids. That goes exact on Monday. And so this line is just unpredictability that stays, that starts elevated. It's going to stay elevated. And um, there's going to be some other events on Wednesday, i.e. the first quarter. Moon is motivating energy and in a big old square. So we'll talk about that here in a second. All right, Thursday, the 9th. Got a lot going on here. We have the Sun and Uranus within a two-degree orb, so they're already conjunct. Uranus is combust at this point, but Uranus with Jupiter, I don't want to say the Jupiter and Sun are equal, but it's I'm not saying that they're canceling each other out, but you have this expansive feeling of change, maybe a lot of positivity and hope and greener pastures, but with the sun coming in here kind of burns things out and maybe dulls it just a little bit. So one of the other archetypes of Uranus is this boom, amazing insights that your mind might get. And uh, those might be a little... I don't know, hazy or not crisp like they normally are, or not maybe not so sudden. Um, and then we've got the sun that represents identity and sovereign and, and uh, this is who I am. And so that combined with this Uranus energy, you can think of uh, Uranus as the foreigner in Taurus because he doesn't really appreciate being there. Um, but because he's in a foreign land, he's really going to be more abrasive. And so there's this struggle happening. And part of this is going to be with identity. And this is going to make for kind of a, a greener pastures, but also like a reinventing yourself combines the illuminating self identity of the sun and the revolutionary insights of Uranus with the earthiness and practicality of Taurus. This archetype is the trailblazer. Check that out. And I forgot to bring him to the top. But here he is. He's the trailblazer planning his next move. And maybe, just maybe, more of a, a flare of greener pastures, looking at what's different. We have the backdrop is fixed earth as you guys already knew from the last couple of weeks that this is happening, the tra trailblazer and the change agent in this physical world bringing brilliant ideas and innovations to reinvent outdated systems and self-identity. So this overall feeling, this is going to be all pretty much all this week going on steroids on Monday. We'll talk about that here but you might feel sudden awakenings and liberating insights, unconventional approaches to resources or finances, ecological or agricultural breakthroughs. How about a boost in self-sufficiency and sustainability? Now, also, all week, we have this Jupiter trying Pluto that is really just getting started. So when we talk about this, it has started in the last surf report and was it's going to be going another month before it goes exact or maybe three weeks from now. But it's the practical utopian visionary. Remember, this is the change, 
change agent who understands that heaven on earth is not just a lofty concept, but a hands-on construction project. This is to improve humanity's condition because Pluto is in Aquarius. And so be looking out for the utopian visionaries and those discussions. You're going to hear them everywhere as things start to deteriorate even more in the material world, in the world of economy, you're going to hear more and a lot more of these utopian options. And be aware, whenever you have a utopian, utopian promises in the past, didn't really go well, as history hopefully doesn't repeat there. I'd be leery of anyone, anyone promising a utopia, especially if it comes with compliance, which is a non-Aquarian aspect. All right, next, all week, we're going to be looking at Venus sextile Saturn as well, and Saturn is in Pisces. So this energy is an opportunity to possibly identify ideal, that's a Pisces thing, ideal relational values. So we're combining Pisces and Taurus and Venus and Saturn. So there might be a stabilizing effect or maybe determination towards your financial values. Finding optimum boundaries in a relationship because Saturn is a boundary planet. And uh, maybe possibly the discipline to choose material value that is also best for the collective because Saturn and Pisces is about the best for the collective. Sunday, all those archetypes that we've mentioned are still alive and increasing until Monday we get to the Uranus Kazemi. And this is the reinventing yourself on steroids. You might get some very crisp and clean and fast and maybe multiple at the same time insights in your mind about identity, maybe your personal value, combining the sun, which is identity, and Taurus is going to be um, worth and, and value, and what do I value? Um, and that might change, but you might also get some big insights there. Venus, or I'm sorry, Jupiter is part of this as well, and that brings a lot more optimism. Look at this. You got uh, sun and Jupiter is parallel, but Sun and Uranus are parallel, and Jupiter and Uranus are all parallel. They're all at the same inclination, which intensifies this very thing. And if you want more information on this this energy or more talk about it, I would go look at the the energy window. I can't remember which number it is, but it's the Gold Rush video, Gold Rush of 2024. And basically, our picture looks like this. This is uh, reinventing yourself, re reinventing your values, bringing that to the front, getting, uh, getting downloads. The light bulb comes on. Now, some other feelings that you might have with this, maybe some restlessness and impulsive changes, destabilizing shocks or upheavals, um, financial or resource-related instability, right? That's why we have the tread carefully itching, which we'll cover next. Today is the 14th of May. This is Tuesday. And now we're just putting all these things together because Venus is closing in and getting closer to Sun, Uranus, Jupiter, all the while, sextile over to Saturn, and what we get all put together, all that uh, Urian energy, uh, or Taurian energy, sorry, is the revolutionary Earth mama. We're putting multiple of the, putting all these archetypes together. This is what you get. Revolutionary Earth mama archetype combines the earthy sensuality and bounty of Taurus with the radical insights and innovations of Uranus. She is grounded in the wisdom of the body, the natural world, which becomes 
wellsprings of beauty, joy, and abundance. And at that time, she is not afraid to challenge and reinvent stagnant structures, blaze new trails, and catalyze progress towards greater sustainability in the material world. And now we have the first quarter moon, which is a very synergistic effect to our uh, mass over here in the fixed earth sign of Taurus. And we get the valiant visionary, very similar to the past. We get, this is the first quarter moon on, sure doesn't look like first quarter, does it? Looks like more like a three quarter. But we have reinvention, we have visionary, we have insights, and you have the motivating effect of first quarter moon is get off your butt. That's the square here. There's this kind of pressure to get stuff done. And it's in Leo, so it's fire sign. Moon is first quarter rising. Um, and then the creative expression of Leo, the valiant visionary summons the courage to take a stand for their authentic self-expression and overcome inner and outer resistance to their creative actualization. Okay. So with that, let's hit the I Ching. This is 10 with a line two. At this time, a relatively humble force or person is having an influence over a stronger one. So we may experience a sense of uncertainty or doubt. There might be a hesitancy to take action or make commitment. I would say that's majority of that is before the first quarter moon up until then. There might be a conflict between wanting to move forward and any desire to hold on to familiar or status quo. Anytime you have change and adaptability, you have this kind of homeostasis feel where part of you wants to hold on to what it used to be. And then we have the may have a strong desire for stability and security. That's the Taurus energy may feel the urge to acquire the necessary skills or information to navigate the upcoming changes. And um, so whatever, whatever skills you need in order to better adapt, you'll have a desire to master that quickly. All right, so let's uh, button up our influence. And we get, I use the same picture from last week, which is the, the bowl that's busting through things. And um, if you think about uh, that, this is kind of busting through anything uh, that limited you before. And you're going to get that based on these urges, these quick change urges. Anyway, the surf week is expected to feel like being on a big ship when the captain begins demanding a last second change in direction. Everyone get ready to go. We're, we're switching gears. We have a different destination. We're moving over here instead. The first quarter moon is motivating action while Uranus demands big change vibes in the fixed earth plane and possible big insights on your core values and self-identity. Self-identity is, again, about the Kazemi, the sun, the sun's involvement in this. It's also important is the Venus sextile Saturn where relationships emerge with more ideal and idealized relational values. All right, now it's time for the solution. Gosh dang it, I did it again. Let me show you the full picture. There's the bowl. Sorry about that. All right. Now we get into the solution. Innocence, you put the hexagram in, or the change line in, you get hexagram 25. The hallmark of innocence is a willingness to treat all creatures with compassion and respect. Cultivate 
And we're, again, we're looking for behaviors because now we're going into the solution. Cultivate a pure, open-hearted attitude. Trust and maintain a positive outlook. I don't think that'll be all, all that hard because Jupiter is right there in all these big aspects. Embrace simplicity and spontaneity. Nurture a childlike sense of wonder. Act with integrity. Avoid deceit and manipulation. And our biggest energy this week was the Uranus Kazemi that's happening in Rave Mandala 23. And we'll look at that next. And we get to Sidereal Aries again. And that will be very, very helpful for our first quarter moon action. But here's the rave. It's the splitting apart. And line five says assimilation. The practical acceptance of the values of another path, the gift of communicating individual insight to the collective, or more driven assimilation for acceptance and protection from the collective. So obviously we want the positive version of this. So look for the continuum and look for the gift of communicating individual insight. That's the Uranus to the collective. Now, Saturn was over there in Pisces. Uh, Pluto is over there in Aquarius, and they're all connected to our uh, trio in Taurus. All right, let's look at the solution now. There we go. We got the I Ching 25 of Innocence. We have, and that's the childlike wonder. And then we have the rave of assimilation. It's the individual insights. Hopefully that's coming from freedom-loving Uranus. And we have sidereal Aries. And we have first quarter moon. So here we go. We start with the first quarter moon and it's overlap with sidereal Aries. It's wake up time. You've got to get going. We got to get moving. Start in on your lunar goals because this is the time. It's enough of planning, enough of setting your goals. And now it's start acting towards them. And with sidereal Aries, try to use impulsiveness if needed to get started on your goals. This is if you have a problem with procrastination, you're going to have to plan in some impulsiveness. <clears throat> but also remember that by keeping an open heart, embracing simplicity and humility, and nurturing a childlike sense of wonder, this will open the floodgates of the Uranian insights, plans, and inventions. So basically, we're taking this uh, left picture, and the upper left and the upper right picture, combining them together now. Use Rave 23 line 5 to help you assimilate those individual insights. And then that's not enough, according to the Rave. Then it's Boldly and ardently, that's in good Aries style, communicate those assimilated insights to the collective. This week, the challenge is to remain open and curious while boldly moving forward with your lunar goals, despite the big Uranian changes. So you can always can be sure that Uranus is going to shake things up. Don't let that make you procrastinate. So you... So even though you kind of know that big changes are coming up, go ahead and start working on your goals anyway. And um, hopefully they're kind of short. I would make these like short tasks so that uh, if there are changes in there, it won't take long to finish it up and move um, and I'd be able to adapt to the change. All right, so now what I want to do is um, also some more announcements that I forgot to mention earlier is the energy windows. This, the, this dream bot, uh, troubleshooting has been taking all my time. So the energy window updates have not been progressed on at all. I hope to get another one out this week. Um, I am think I'm done troubleshooting and fixing the dream bot. Now it's just a matter of seeing if it's going to work or not. Um, so in the meantime, I'll get started on the next energy report or next energy window. And 
Uh, and then other things that I've been thinking about in, in terms of probably the Uranus insights is moving these surf reports into a much more logical sequence such that it's more efficient for, for my preparation, but also just if, just as, or better uh, efficient at getting you the information that you need, or that we all need for each week. So anyway, I'm going to be looking at that and um, looking forward to some changes here on our surf reports but hopefully not sacrificing any of, the, any of the accuracy and any of the helpfulness. So if you have any comments along those lines or suggestions, please let me know. You guys' uh, comments have been extraordinary and given me some great insight over the years, so keep that up. All right, that's it, everybody. You enjoy this week and do your thing and let Uranus help you along the way. Um, it's going to be some big positive changes as we continue towards the uh, Torian Gold Rush 2024. All right. Take care. We'll see you next week. Namaste.